Spirit friends, welcome back for a very special edition of Create with Miss Carrie. Today we're going to make some art inspired by a very important lady who was the founder of Girl Scouts. Her name is Juliet Gordon Lowe, but everyone called her Daisy. So today we're going to make some beautiful daisies to celebrate Girl Scouts because this week is Girl Scout week. So you will see all over the place people celebrating that they were Girl Scouts when they were little or girls celebrating that they're still part of Girl Scouts. And so it's really fun to celebrate by doing something artsy. We're going to read a story to learn a little bit about Daisy called Here Comes the Girl Scouts by Shana Corey, illustrated by Hadley Hooper. And what's really neat about this book is that on every page, you'll see that there is a saying or a quote or something that Juliet Gordon Lowe wrote either in one of her Girl Scout handbooks or in letters and journals. So you'll get to hear little bits of wisdom from Daisy as we read through this book. All right, let's get started. Daisy was a girl with gumption. Gumption, noun, courage, spunk, initiative, wit. To make yourself strong and healthy, it's necessary to begin with your inside. Daisy grew up in Savannah, Georgia, at a time when proper young ladies were supposed to be dainty and delicate. It's possible for any girl to make herself into a strong and healthy woman if she takes the trouble to do a few body exercises every day. But Daisy came from a family of pathfinders and pioneers. She wanted adventure and excitement. Delicate, thought Daisy. Oh, bosh, how boring. Fresh air is your great friend. When Daisy grew up, she went traveling, ready for adventure, but on a visit home, she got an ear infection and lost almost all of her hearing. Daisy didn't let an obstacle stop her from seeing the world, though. Her mother worried, so Daisy wrote and reassured her. Progress. Daisy's hearing February 1st. Heard a foghorn March 1st. Hearing improved, heard a camel when it rose, April 1st. Hearing decidedly improved, heard grass growing. Daisy had adventure after adventure. When she wanted a new gate for her house, she took lessons from a blacksmith and forged it herself. She rode elephants in India, visited the Great Pyramid in Egypt, went fishing during fancy dinner parties, and even flew in a monoplane. A delicious experience, she said. Every time you show your courage, it grows. After many years, though, Daisy grew restless. Her family had settled towns and served in wars, written books, and built railroads. Daisy wanted more than adventure. She wanted to be useful, to make a difference in the world. But what could she do? Then one day, Daisy discovered a group in England called the Boy Scouts. It had begun as a way for boys to help serve their country, and the Boy Scouts spent lots of time outdoors, running and camping and swimming and fishing. There was even a sister group called the Girl Guides. The more Daisy learned, the more excited she grew. Why, the girls in America should have something like this, Daisy thought. Many of the greatest movements for the good of people and those which have influenced the world most have been the work of one person. Daisy couldn't wait to get started. She packed a girl guide handbook and took a steamer back home. When she arrived, she telephoned her cousin, Nina. Come right over, she said. I've got something for the girls of Savannah in all America and all the world, and we're gonna start it tonight. The work of today is the history of tomorrow, and we are its makers.
On March 12, 1912, Daisy began her biggest adventure yet. She invited 18 girls to the first Girl Scout meeting. She told them all the adventures she would have. She, they hiked and camped and swam. They did good deeds. They learned to tie knots and survive in the wilderness and even save lives. The girls thought Daisy's idea was brilliant. Daisy divided them into two troops. Then she taught them the 10 Girl Scout laws. Getting right down and smelling the fresh soil is good for anyone. A Girl Scout is honorable, loyal, useful, a friend to all, courteous, pure, kind to animals, obedient, cheerful, and thrifty. From then on, Daisy devoted all of her energy to the Girl Scouts. She designed uniforms for them to wear. She gave them her carriage house to meet in. She turned a vacant lot across the street from her house into a basketball court. She even gave the Girl Scouts a boat so they could take trips up and down the river. Whatever you take up, do it with all your might. Daisy wanted the Girl Scouts to be open to lots of different girls. So she organized troops in private schools and in orphanages, in churches, in synagogues, in factories, and in shops. Of course, some people didn't approve of Daisy's new adventure. Here come the Girl Scouts, they grumbled. Unthinkable, preposterous, but nothing would stop Daisy. A Girl Scout is a friend to all and a sister to every other Girl Scout, no matter to what social class she may belong. Daisy and her friend, Professor Walter Hoxie, worked together to write a handbook for the Girl Scouts. The girls read the book and learned all sorts of interesting things, such as how to find time by the stars or by the sun, how to cure hams, how to secure a burglar with eight inches of cord, how to stop a runaway horse, how to brush your teeth if a crocodile takes your toothbrush, how to get the skin off a sardine. Waste of time is the worst of waste. We can never get those moments back again. Girl Scouts worked on earning badges, dairy maid, pioneer, horsemanship, naturalist, swimmer, interpreter, cyclist, flyer. You will not have any luck unless you try hard. The Girl Scouts went camping. They took an oyster boat to an island near Savannah. They sang songs around the campfire. They feasted on fish and cornbread and turtle eggs. At night, they tiptoed out of their tents and they slept under the stars. To get the full benefit of actual contact with nature, it is absolutely necessary to camp out where every breath of heaven can reach you and all the wild things are within easy reach. Most of all, the Girl Scouts went on walks. They savored the green, they soaked up the sunshine, they breathed the good, fresh air. In this United States of ours, we have cut down too many trees, so let us plant trees. All over Savannah, people saw the Girl Scouts swimming and singing and hiking and camping and playing basketball. Some of them just sniffed and shook their heads. Nature, fresh air, blah, said one dainty damsel. In my day, young ladies knew their place, grouched a grandmama. All that exercise can't be good for them, worried the neighbors. Other people saw them and thought and cheered. Here come the Girl Scouts. They hugged their daughters and smiled and said, it's about time. When mean girls want you to join in some low fun, when you think it is not right, be brave and have courage to say it isn't right. You will feel twice as happy afterwards. 
Daisy traveled all over giving speeches and raising money for the Girl Scouts. Many people heard her and started their own troops. Soon there were Girl Scouts across the country. The world looks to great organizations like the Girl Scouts to break down petty barriers of race and class. But Daisy never forgot the Girl Scouts of Savannah. Whenever she wasn't traveling, she visited them and told them about her adventures. She shared stories of female doctors, scientists, architects, and airplane pilots. And she read to them from the Girl Scout handbook. One of you may someday alter the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Daisy believed that girls could do anything to get on in the world, to give every anything and get anything out of it, each girl has got to do her part. And she was right. Girl Scouts have been making a difference ever since, just like Daisy. Rebecca Lobo is an athlete. Natalie Merchant is a musician. Gloria Steinem is an activist. Hillary Clinton is a politician, Lisa Ling, journalist, Lucille Ball, actor, Rita Dove, a poet, I wonder what you'll be. Every little girl goes to make up some part or parcel of our great whole nation. So the founder of the Girl Scouts is Juliet Gordon Lowe, but she was known as Daisy her whole life. The story was, I think, that her uncle saw her when she was born and he said, well, isn't she a pretty little Daisy? And that's how she got her nickname. So in honor of Juliet Gordon Lowe, since it's Girl Scout week, I thought we could make a pretty picture of daisies. And we're gonna be using some oil pastels, some watercolors, and even a permanent marker. But first I'm going to sketch my design in pencil to make sure I like how it looks. We're gonna do some daisies that somebody is holding in their hand. So first we need to draw the hand. Now drawing a hand that's holding daisies is kind of tricky because you've got all these fingers that are bent. So let's do it nice and slow together. We're gonna draw the thumb that sits on top of the fist. And so here we go. Here's the first part where the fingernail is gonna go. Here's the middle part of the thumb. And then here's the part of the thumb that goes all the way into the wrist. See how it slopes downwards and then straightens out? So we've got the top edge. That's a funny shape, but it'll start to make sense after we do the bottom side. So here's the part that goes under the nail. Here's the middle part of the thumb. And then here's the part that comes towards the middle of the hand. Can you see it? It goes doot, 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 like that. Okay, now that we've got that part, now we can start adding the rest of the fingers. So we've got our thumb. We need four fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and space them out. There's the first finger, the little part of the first finger. Here's the second one. Here's the third one, and here's the pinky. All right, now that I've got them all lined up, I'm gonna add the sections in between. I'm gonna go in and around. In and around. In and around, and this is the pinky, so it's a little bit smaller. All right. We can go ahead and add the fingernails. They'll look more like fingers once we do that. So the thumb is faced up, so you only see half of the fingernail. And oops, that looks way too big for that thumb. Sometimes you draw it and you can tell right away when it's wrong, and that was wrong. Okay, that's way better. All right, so we've got the thumb. Let's do the rest of the fingers. Now, if you have pretty fancy fingernails and you want to make them look that way in the picture, go for it. I have artist fingernails, which means short and no polish because I get 
paint under them all the time. All right, we've got our thumb, we've got our fingers. Let's continue our hand off the edge of the page. So I'm gonna start right below the pinky and I'm going to curve it up and then straighten it out. And if you wanted to, you could even give yourself a bracelet or a watch or something decorative on your wrist. But for right now, I think I'm just going to put a little line there. That's for some of the little creases on the inside. And we're ready to work on our daisies, which is the main part of our project. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw the daisies and then I'll put the stems down into the hand. Daisies are pretty easy flower to draw because they have just a pretty circle in the center and then they have long little petals that go all the way around. And because I don't want you to have to watch me tracing forever, I'm gonna switch to my Sharpie so that we can go a little faster. But I would say if you're doing this with me, why don't you do it draw it in pencil first, and then go back and trace over the pencil with your Sharpie so that if you make any mistakes, you're okay. So some daisies are facing us, but then there's other daisies that do this. You have a center that looks like a gumdrop, doesn't it? And then the petals go out to the side and then they start coming straight at you like that. Let's do another one of these. We'll do one right here. And daisies can come in different colors, but the ones that I think are the prettiest and that I look forward to every year are the white ones with the yellow centers. I think they're super pretty. All right, I'll do another one that's facing sideways here. And then I think I can fit one more round one right down here. Okay. Now we've got our daisies and we can outline our hand. And I haven't forgotten, we have to go back and add those stems. What's nice is when you're watching this with me, you can hit pause and you can finish up each step of the project and then jump back in with me. Okay, we've got the flowers, we've got the hand, we don't have stems. So I'm going to go up under the bottom of that flower and draw a line so that it looks like it goes all the way into the hand and out the bottom side. Let's do that for each of our flowers. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. We need five stems coming out the bottom, don't we? That's two, three, four, and we'll squeeze one more in there, five. All right, we've got a nice drawing. Now we can add a little bit of color and I'm going to do that with some oil pastels. So if you've ever taken a lesson with me before, you know that oil pastels are super fun when you mix them with watercolor. So this may seem a little crazy because I'm coloring with a white piece of oil pastel but it's going to make sense once we start painting. So what I'm doing is I am coloring the inside of my flower petals. And when you paint on top of them, the white shows up. It's sort of like a little 
magic trick that we do with artwork. So I love the combination of this. And I think that I'm gonna go ahead and color the um, centers of my daisies and add a little bit of green to the stems too. Um, because when you're working with watercolors, sometimes it's hard to get a teeny tiny line. So I think it's a little bit easier for us if we do it with the oil pastel for this project. All right, so I'm coloring the inside of the Daisy Center yellow, because those are my favorites. And then I'm gonna grab a green and go on top of my stems. And get those pretty as well. There we go. Okay, if you really want to keep going, you could even color your fingernails. In fact, why don't I do that? What color would I like my fingernails today? I'm going to do a pink color. Ooh, that is pink. I guess that is perfect for springtime. <laughs> And then let's get painting. I'm gonna paint the skin first because once my water gets all colored um, with different colors, it's gonna be hard to make that skin color not look messy. Like if I use a blue background, my water's gonna turn all blue. We don't want a blue hand. All right, let's mix up skin colors. So skin colors are all really different. So let's see what colors I can make. I'm gonna start with an orange and I always like to mix my paint colors on the top of my lid. All right, so nobody is actually orange in color from what I've seen out in the world. I haven't seen somebody who looks bright orange, but we can take that color and change it a little bit. So. Let's see what happens if I add a little brown to it. So that's a pretty color and that would be pretty for skin color. If your skin is lighter than that, let's see, what would I do? I would add a little bit of red to it. I know you're thinking, red, what? You add a little bit of red to it and then you add lots and lots of water and it makes it lighter and lighter and lighter. So even though it looks dark right there, when I paint, that's more of a peachy color. Let's go back to that other color. This is more of a tan color. And then if you have a little bit more of yellow tone in your skin, you could add a little bit of yellow to the mixture and that would make it look a little bit more similar to somebody who has sort of yellow tone. See how like bright pink my skin is underneath? So I'm going to make a hand that probably is not quite matching mine, but that doesn't matter. All we want is a painted hand. And I think it's really neat learning how to mix colors for the different skin tones because hey we're all like a rainbow if you put us all together we have all the colors in the world together so it's kind of neat to learn how to mix colors to look like different people okay so we've got our skin painted let's paint the background but before we do that there's one more thing i want to do i'm going to very lightly Draw a little rainbow right around the top of my flowers. And I'm going to use my best handwriting to write one of the Girl Scout slogans, which is do a good turn daily. So if you need to, you can certainly start with pencil. But I'm going to right with my Sharpie. Yeah. 
And then see how that made a pretty arch? I can go back with my eraser and erase the line, the rainbow line underneath now that my words are in the direction that I want them to be. Okay, now that I've got my saying up there, I'm ready to paint the whole background and I think I'm gonna use blue. I think blue is a pretty background for these daisies. So let me get my blue mixed. I'm not adding any colors to it. I'm just adding some water. And you can paint right on top of those daisies that we colored in. And here's where the magic happens. I'm painting right on top, but the oil pastels are saying, nope, you can't mess me up. So the, what they're doing is they're resisting the water, because oil pastels and water don't mix. So the water just kind of bubbles right up, beads off the top of them. Isn't that cool? That's why I love painting and using oil pastels together. All right, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful as I get closer to the hand, because although it would be cool to have blue skin color, that's really not what I want for this painting. All right, so I'm gonna paint around the outside of the flowers, but probably not the whole page. I don't think I need to paint the whole page. And if you wanted it a little bit darker, you can go back over and just use a little less water with your watercolors, and that can make your color a little brighter. There, beautiful. Perfect. All right, I hope that your daisies turn out gorgeous and maybe it's a gift you can give someone and that can be your good turn for the day. Have a great day and a great Girl Scout week and I'll do some more art with you next time. Bye, everybody.